And good morning, everybody. And I apologize in advance that my voice is a little bit nasally. I spent the last week conquering COVID and uh, happy to finally test negative, but still a little bit of congestion. So bear with me. I will say that the silver lining, if there is one, is that I was quarantined during the opening weekend of the WNBA. So I know you're not here to hear my analysis of those games, but it was a lot of fun. And um, we are in the middle of an election, so we're going to turn to that. So just want to give you a couple of, of quick reminders about things we want Oregon voters to know ahead of the May primary election is first, if folks don't have a ballot yet, it's not a problem. They just need to go to their county elections office and vote. It's quick and easy. And for a list of county elections offices, they can visit OregonVotes.gov. And as always, ballots are due by 8 p.m. on Tuesday, May 17th. And you can return your ballot at the county elections office at an official drop site. You can look at OregonVotes.gov to find the drop site nearest you, or you can mail it back. Postage is prepaid, so no stamp is necessary. But if you're mailing it, a postmark is necessary. And this is the first statewide election with the new postmark rule, which means that ballots are on time if they are postmarked by election day even if they arrive at the elections offices up to seven days after the election. So Oregonians should expect that a number of ballots received in a, the number of ballots received in a county may increase slightly after election day. But again, these are ballots that were cast on time. They were cast by 8 p.m. on election day. So in close races, it may take a few days before we know the unofficial winner because elections officials will still be counting all on time and verified ballots. So uh, turnout is generally high in Oregon thanks to our modern and convenient vote by mail system. Flat out Oregonians are voters. And so uh, we're, we're expecting high turnout in this election just like we always do. So far, we've seen slower returns this year. We're at just under 10% yesterday compared with about 12% in 2018, but we expect Oregonians to get, their, to get their ballots in by 8 p.m. on May 17th. And just wanna put in a plug for voting, just to remind Oregonians that important decisions that impact our families are being made by elected officials from county commissions to Washington, D.C. And voting gives us a say in those decisions. And fortunately in Oregon, voting is easy, modern and secure. And if you've got your ballot and a pen, you're good to go. You don't need to fill out the whole ballot or you can, it's totally up to you. And you can join us as Oregon continues to boast the high, some of the highest voter turnout really in the country. And then finally, our elections are really the gold standard in election integrity. Our vote by mail system is accurate and secure and transparent. And it's been built over the past two decades by Republicans and Democrats together. And it's really something that every Oregonian should be proud of. From start to finish, our elections officials take steps to protect the integrity of our elections. Anti-fraud protections are built into our vote by mail system. Elections start with accurate voter registration lists. When ballots are returned, officials use handwriting analysis to verify every single ballot signature. Unique barcodes are on every ballot. Cameras broadcast every space where ballots are handled in our county elections offices, and observers are welcome to watch the process. And then finally, post-elections audits, which are not new. Our county elections officials have been doing post-election audits for decades, uh, conducted in all 36 counties, and they help officials verify the accuracy of the results. So these procedures are why Oregonians can trust the results of their elections. So before we take questions, I just want to note that we are seven days away from an election. This is my first statewide election that I'm overseeing. So I'm just very aware of how important it is for me to not say anything that could impact the outcome of any particular contest. So I'm happy to take your questions. But in advance, I just want to be clear that I'm going to be careful and choose my words carefully, especially if asked about any particular candidate. We're, of course, happy to share any information we have and make sure that you're getting accurate information in your stories. And I also invited our elections director, Deborah Scroggin, and our information services director, Chris Mullen, to be here today as subject matter experts. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Ben, and let's take some questions. Great. Thank you very much. Um, first hand I saw was from Gary. Gary Warner, go ahead. Hi, thank you, Secretary, uh, for this uh, availability today. I have two questions. Um, first of all, uh, can you give us an update on the situation with Clackamas County and whether there will have to be a hand count 
on election night? And if there has to be a hand count, uh, is there a way to do uh, the Democratic and Republican ballot returns first, since uh, the majority of the races are partisan? Second, on the mail uh, ballot uh, situation in other states, um, the secretaries of state have worked with the United States Postal Service to do sweeps very late on election nights. Um, what are you doing to uh, try to get all of the uh, um, postmark ballots uh, into your office as soon as possible rather than seven days? I'm, I know some will trickle in like from out of state, I guess, but uh, how soon do you think you'll have like just about everything? Thanks for A lot the of question. questions. Yeah, no worries. Hey, that's what we're here for, Gary. That's the, literally the whole reason we did this. So happy to answer. And I'm going to, I'll give you kind of a, a brief update on Clackamas County, but Deborah, if you have more recent information from talking with uh, Clerk Sherry Hall, then please, please pipe up. So first off, I just want to say that one of the securities of our system in Oregon is decentralized elections, right? So elections don't flow through the Secretary of State's office. They flow through our 36 independent elections offices around the country. And so that's actually one of the safeguards built in so that a a human error, a mistake, as was found um, in the Clackamas County elections, affects just one area, but it doesn't affect elections across the state because that decentralized system. So that is one of our safeguards built in. We were, of course, notified about the smudging um, issue with the ballot uh, barcodes early on and, have, and have basically let the county know immediately what the legal you know, what the legal procedure is to make sure those ballots are accurately duplicated. So I don't think that it's going to require hand counting, but there's a duplication procedure that they have to go to, which again is observed by a member of each party. Uh, these, this is all transparent and observed to make sure that where their, their ballots, the votes are transferred to a ballot that can then be run through the system. But that's, that's my last conversation about it. Deborah, I'm going to turn it over to Deborah again as a subject matter expert to see if she has any more updates on Clackamas County. And then Gary, I'll take your other question after that. Hi, good morning, everyone. Deborah Scroggin, Elections Division Director. I don't have any recent updates. We're monitoring it closely. We're in contact with Clackamas County. Um, with regard to hand recount, it's not a hand recount process. I just want to clarify that. The duplication procedure is overseen by folks from different parties, um, and then it goes to the tabulation machines once corrected. So um, hand recounts come as a post-election um, review. Every county conducts them, and they are done with certain races selected randomly um, by the Secretary of State's office. So that's how that's conducted to answer your question about party there, Gary. If I could, if I could just could um, you give us a, a little distillation about what you mean by duplicating ballots? That's a word that uh, could easily be misconstrued. What does that mean? Yes, and I would like to follow up with you on that because we have detailed the process. It is a standard procedure in in elections, um, and it happens, for instance, when someone spills maybe mustard on their ballot and it goes through and the machine can't read it. So it needs to be machine duplicated onto a clean ballot with the voter intent copied directly. Um, and that is done by a machine and overseen by um, by folks from different parties, making sure that that's done correctly. It is not typically done at this scale. So that is the difference here. Okay, hey, thank you. Yeah. And then Gary, with respect to your question about the the sweeps done by the Postal Service. I bet other states learned that from Oregon because we've been working with our Postal Service for over, uh, for over 20 years on vote by mail and have a great relationship with our letter carriers who, who really see themselves as part of democracy. When I spoke at a convention down in, uh, I think it was in Lane County, earlier this year, we just, you know, they're, they're people that are on the front lines of our democracy. So they'll continue to do what they've always done, which is essentially looking through to try to, you know, deliver ballots directly to the, the county elections offices. And those ballots are cast again on time by 8 p.m. on Tuesday, May 17th. Uh, just a quick follow up on that. Um, there, there's, a, there's a possibility that you're going to end up with some people who are going to have postmarks on the 18th. Maybe they put it in a box too late, or they stuck it out on their mailbox for the mail carrier to to pick up. Are there any attempts to maybe have later than posted pickups at all boxes like at eight o'clock or uh, to get ones that have been being brought in by the mail carrier that might normally take an extra day to get uh, stamped? There's no additional procedures being put in place that I'm aware of if Deborah knows something different, but here's the important thing. If a postmark, if a ballot is postmarked on May 18th, it is a late ballot. It will not be Except it is very important for folks. First off, anybody that's ever gotten their ballot in in a previous election by 8 p.m. on election day, change nothing because if it was in on time before, it will be on time this time. 
Um, this is about you know making sure that folks, if you're going to go to a blue box, uh, you know a postal box, make sure you check those pickup times. Right? They might not have a pickup time after three o'clock or four o'clock on election day. If in doubt, just put it in a ballot, an official ballot drop box. Those can have ballots dropped in until 8 p.m. on election night. But if you're using a U.S. Postal Service box, it must be postmarked by that day. So there is no, uh, there's no pr provision in the law to accept ballots postmarked after election day. We think this is important to build trust in this new postmark law that there's that even though ballots may arrive up to seven days after election day, those ballots that are postmarked on or before election day are the only ballots that will be deemed on time. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate your questions. Uh, next hand I see is Julia Shumway. Julia, go ahead. Thanks. So I wanted to know what you're seeing as far as uh, misinformation and disinformation ahead of the election. I know this has been a, a big concern for your office. Does it seem like we're, we're in a good place? Are there a lot of rumors that you're having to bat down? What, what does this scene look like for you? Well, the good thing, Julia, is just, you know, the Oregonians have been doing this for 20 years. So I think we're less susceptible to the false information and conspiracies around vote by mail than maybe other states that just started it. Um, so we're not seeing anything widespread. What we are concerned about is any, you know, human errors that have been made because humans run elections and there's, you know, occasionally human errors that some of you have reported about that we're immediately transparent about those or if it happened at a county elections office that we're encouraging them to be immediately transparent about those so that you can get that accurate information out. But most importantly, the folks know that those, you know, any human errors that have been made that there's a procedure to remedy those to built in because the bottom line is the Oregonians can be secure, you know, can be can trust their election system. Our elections are secure and the ballots are going to be accurately counted and the results are going to be accurately reported. But I, I will note that if you as the media are hearing about anything, um, you know, please do like we talked about on that media call, let us know. Uh, reach out to Ben, reach out to uh, Deborah to make sure that if there's anything that you're hearing that we need to be aware of because we want to work with you to make sure we get trusted information out there. Thank you, Secretary, and thank you, Julia. Uh, the next hand I saw was uh, Dirk Vanderhart. Dirk, go ahead. Hey, good morning. Um, can you all hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, two quick questions for, for y'all. Um, the first is, is there a schedule for updates um, for election night. Obviously, we in the media are used to how it was. We're all kind of wondering how it will work. And so having some sort of, if there is a schedule for when you plan on updating results or if it's just catch as catch can, um, curious about that. Second, is there any requirement for the local elections offices, the county elections offices to um, tabulate like the the ballots they get that maybe don't have postmarks. We talked about this before where Yamhill offered a spreadsheet and they, some things just don't get postmarked. And if they are arrived and they don't get the other mark that I forget what it's called, but is, is used either. And it, just, it would just be helpful to, to have a sense of how many are coming in like that, you know? Um, so is there any requirement that elections offices keep that information like Brian uh, does in Yamhill? Well, I'm going to have Deborah take the question about the schedule for the updates, just because we're not planning to do anything differently, just because some ballots may arrive up to seven days after election day. Again, as long as they are postmarked on or before election day, they're going to be they're there on time. But there's not that doesn't necessarily change our election night procedure. So I'll let Deborah address that more specifically. It's good to see you, Dirk. You had an RSVP and I was sad to hear that you weren't going to be here. So Dirk is a late RSVP guy. Good to know if I ever invite you to my wedding. <laughs> um, but in terms of, yeah, there is a provision in the law that was passed by the legislature that says that if a ballot, you know, doesn't have a postmark, and again, postmark isn't just what you see um, with your naked eye. There's also scanners that our county elections offices have. So you may think it doesn't have a postmark, but it actually does. But in this situation where there is no postmark whatsoever, the, the law that is in place is that basically to assume that somebody did cast it on time uh, because of the, you know, essentially with the signature verification on the back. But I'm going to turn it over to Deborah in case she has more specific information about the schedule updates for election night. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Dirk. Um, 
there will be a schedule. So each county is required to put a schedule on their website of when they will be posting results and should they have an unfortunate circumstance or something, you know, a large dump comes in or a small amount comes in, um, they will be updating that as necessary. Um, one thing to note is that the law does require counties to take into consideration voter anonymity. So if there's a situation where they don't want to update the next day because it could be um, evaluated about the way someone voted with the size of precincts in some areas, they may hold those results and combine them with others if we've directed them to do that. Um, but in general, we don't expect that um, there will be a big delay on election night. We still, a lot of folks will be reporting on election night still, so you should still look for that. Um, and then if you have questions about individual updates that you're not seeing, please direct those to the county because they'll have information there. And just uh, really regard? quickly, oh, sorry, please, please. Second question, I wanted to answer that. Um, we are requiring counties to report to us directly um, at the end of the election about all of the data that you mentioned, um, postmarks legible, not legible, received before and after um, election day. So we expect to have that data to report back out um, after the election is certified. That was my follow-up, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Dirk. All right, no hands up at this point. Does anyone else have a question they would like to jump in with? Well, I guess uh, uh, as long as we're here, um, any update on the the whole CNE systems or star thing is that is that been resolved as far as you all know? Is it still um, nothing shady or atypical has shown up on the CNE system? Just since no one else is asking anything. Well, thanks, Dirk. The most important thing for us to get out to Oregon voters is um, is that the Oregonians information in the Secretary of State's database is safe and uncompromised. And I actually did ask our IS director, Chris Mullen, to join us in case folks had more detailed questions. And I saw that Chris just popped online. So go ahead, Chris. Yeah, thank you. I'm Chris Mullen. I'm the IT director here at Secretary of State. Um, you know, even though our systems, uh, this wasn't an SOS systems breach, we immediately kicked off an incident response team to work with uh, CNE in handling their attack. Uh, we've worked with them over the last couple of days, and uh, and ultimately we just forced a password uh, reset against all of those uh, particular accounts. Um, we are constantly monitoring for any anomalous traffic, and to answer your question. Uh, there's been no indications of anything um, through any of our analytics tools. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, I saw Gary pop back up with a follow-up question. Gary, go ahead. Yes, uh, the Secretary, you mentioned about uh, that you've never dealt with a problem like this on this scale. Clackamas has, I believe, the third uh, largest number of registered voters, even with a uh, say a, a third, 30% uh, um, uh, turnout, you're looking at 100,000 ballots uh, across the board there. Um, how long is this going to delay things? Are, are, it, there's a, uh, it, it's, it's a big county, it's split. A lot of the candidates are from there. Um, how's it gonna impact Tuesday night? And how long do you think it's gonna delay things overall? So are we talking about hours, days? Yeah, thanks. And Deborah, I'm going to turn this over to you in a moment so you can formulate your response. But yeah, thanks, Gary. I mean, as, as Deborah mentioned, there is a process in law for, you know, if sometimes if a ballot gets rained on or something like that and it can't go through the system, there is a process in law. But as Deborah mentioned, we're not aware of this ever having to happen on this scale as it will in Clackamas County. What voters in Clackamas County, myself included, I'm a Clackamas County voter, can be rest assured is that the results will be accurate. Um, when whether or not they will be as fast. I'm going to turn it over to Deborah to see if she has any updates from Clackamas County. But the most important thing is that we get it right, not that we get it fast. Yeah, I would just echo that Clackamas County has repeatedly stated that um, they don't foresee any major delay in their processing. There is a waiver process if they need one, and they have not requested it yet. Now, that waiver process would be to start opening up the ballots earlier or what? Um, no, it would be to um, to provide us results, and we don't we don't foresee needing that in Clackamas County. I would revert you back to them because they have repeatedly stated to us that they don't foresee needing a waiver process. Okay, but a hundred thousand ballots. Uh, do these have to be hand fed into this machine? Uh, why do they think that there's not going to be a delay? 
um, my understanding is they've just brought in a lot more resources to handle the situation. They're bringing in folks every day um, to, to just add more staff um, than they were expecting to before. And for those reasons, they think they'll be able to handle it. Thank you. Yeah, and maybe this would be helpful, Deborah, if you could kind of, because again, this is not something, it's one of those processes that's built into our system that people don't even know that's been happening for the past 20 years. And all of a sudden, something on this scale makes people ask about it. Deborah, if you want to just maybe break it down a little bit and walk them through, because it's not a hand, no one's in there like filling in bubbles by hand. Um, it is a machine process that is about voter intent. And again, is observed by somebody from the Republican and Democratic Party. Every single ballot is observed by somebody from both parties. The transparency is there. But Deborah, do you want to kind of maybe walk Gary and folks just through what that looks like? Um, and maybe I just gave enough detail, but we just want to make sure folks understand this process that's happened. There's provisions in law for it, but it just never has happened on this scale before. Yeah, it does get kind of detailed. So I'm happy to follow up and just give you the instructions that we have in our vote by mail manual that goes over how to do this. Um, and you can also see um, firsthand how Clackamas is handling it. Um, I'm sure they're able to break that down for you as well. Uh, but again, it is sort of a machine process that is overseen by two people that are making sure that voter intent is maintained. Um, and then the, um, the corrected ballots, meaning the ballots that are not um, defective with those ballot, with those barcodes on the side, go through a machine process. So that's what I just want to clarify. These are not being hand counted. Um, they do take some extra processing time, though. Will, will that mean that you guys will be at SOS uh, be working later, have later reports than normal? Do you know when you're going to finally just sort of shut it down for the night on the 17th in terms of staffing? On our side, we plan to be available as long as counties need us um, for the Secretary of State's office. Um, I don't imagine. What about for the media? I'll be here all night, Gary. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I saw a new hand from Connor. Uh, Connor, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi, Secretary. You mentioned earlier that returns are coming in below what we saw in 2018. Uh, I'm curious if you have any indication as to why that might be. I mean, we don't speculate about that. Um, we know that Oregonians are voter that, that are Oregonians are voters. We have some of the highest voter turnout in the in the country, and so you know why Oregonians are waiting to turn their ballots in this election. We just have no idea. All we have is the data, but we don't speculate about why. Okay. Thank you, Connor. Um, any additional questions? We have uh, another couple of minutes here. Is there, I guess it's scary again, um, is there a, uh, a continuity of, of final pickup times uh, for, for postal? I know with the boxes, basically it's eight o'clock and, it, and then they go out and they get them and they bring them in. But then in terms of the postal uh, pickups uh, in Multnomah compared to say Jackson County, there isn't a big difference in terms of the, the hour that the US Postal Service goes out and grabs the, the, the last ballots that can be stamped with the uh, postmark for the 17th. Thanks, Gary. And thanks. And keep asking questions. That's what we're here for. I'm not aware of any discrepancies between or any, uh, you know, specific rules for this election. The thing we want to keep emphasizing to Oregonians is if you're going to go into uh, a blue USPS collection box, check that collection time. And if in doubt, drop it into an official ballot drop box or turn it into your local county elections office. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of a third rail here and just say that um, uh, under the prior administration, federal administration, uh, there was a lot of questions about um, the, the, the post office and staffing and machines and things like that. Has the current uh, during this election, uh, post, U.S. Postal Service been cooperative, professional, any problems at all with them? We have not had any problems. We have a great relationship, as we did two years ago, even under the, the previous administration. We have a great relationship with our letter carriers here in Oregon. Again, they consider themselves part of our democracy, on the front lines of our democracy, and they take that role really seriously. So we've had zero problems with our Postal Service. Great. I have no more. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, call Ben if you have any follow-up. I will. I will. For. Thank you. You got it. Great. Thank you, Gary. Um, okay. Well, it uh, looks like questions are drying up, so um, I think we can call it a day. Um, I just want to say a couple of quick things. If um, 
if anyone would like a recording of this, please feel free to reach out to me directly. I think I'll probably send out a press release with the recording proactively, but just let me know if you want one. Um, and yeah, like, uh, like the secretary said, if anyone has any additional questions, you've got my email and phone number, please feel free to reach out anytime. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thank you all so much for Thank coming. You. Get well. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.